Hi, I'm Belinda Luscombe from Time, pole farmer is a physician who has tried and actually kind of succeeded in bringing gold standard health care to the poorest people in the poorest nations. He has a new book to repair the world and I'm delighted to say that he's here with us at Time today. Dr. Farmer, welcome. Thank you very much. You say the biggest failure that we have in providing health care to the people who are very poor is a failure of the imagination. It must be a failure of the imagination because a lot of the technologies that you need or the human resources that you need to do a good job for in settings of poverty, we have them elsewhere. You know, the idea that you could send a, a rover to Mars but not, you know, build a healthcare system for uh, that protects poor people is is a uh, it's just not possible that we couldn't do that. Well, you write in the book about accompaniment rather than aid. Can you explain what that means? Well, you know, accompaniment is is what a physician <clears throat> ought to be doing, or a nurse. That is, you don't say to a patient, hey, here's the beginning of your illness and here's the end of it. You really say, okay, I'm, I'm going to be your doctor for a long time. It seems to me, looking at aid, that it would be a better model than some of the other ones that have preceded it. So, using this idea of accompaniment, you are a champion of, of great health care for the poorest. And the problem that a lot of people have with that is that that is really expensive and really difficult to provide such health care. Great health care may be less expensive than um, erratically administered or tardily administered health care. At least I think it is. But I've been lucky enough to work in places where there's you know, enormous constraint on uh, health care expenditures, rural Haiti, rural Rwanda. Um, and seeing that you can build systems that can provide compassionate prevention and care uh, for the whole population with a focus on uh, serving the poorest, probably for relatively uh, limited amounts of money. So there's a story you tell in the book about happening upon a man who was about to die from an asthma attack. And it just so happens that the only piece of medical equipment you have on you at the time was an inhaler because you yourself were an asthmatic and you managed to get enough of this inhaler substance uh, into the man that he could recover. W what do you take away from that story? I had been there in his village in Haiti for another reason, for a community meeting, and I didn't have a stethoscope and I didn't have my bag. His wife said, please, doctor, please, and so I went. And if you're having an asthma attack and you can get this medication, which is just albuterol, um, it feels, it looks like a miracle, but it's not a miracle. Then the next day he came to see me in the clinic um, and brought me a you know, rooster and heaped praise on me and everybody in the village did. And you, know, you kind of like that when you're a doctor. Right, uh, who doesn't praised, want a rooster, right. right. And who doesn't want a rooster? I was thinking more of the praise. But <laughs> then to say, you know, the best thing we can do, of course, is build systems that protect people uh, from that kind of risk. So it sounds to me that it exhilarates you more to actually change public policy to get prevention in place rather than the hands-on yeah. healing of one guy. In the last 10 years, life expectancy has almost doubled in Rwanda. Child mortality has plummeted. Uh, death during childbirth and deaths from patients who already have AIDS or tuberculosis have dropped precipitously. Uh, is that because someone like me went and delivered care um, to an individual patient? Or is it because people thought about the systems of healthcare delivery and how to bring them up to scale for all Rwandans, and it's really the latter. Dr. Farmer, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Melinda.